Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so we're going to talk about intermolecular forces. You might have also heard that as IMFs. Um, that is the attraction between two or more molecules. Um, I hope you don't get that confused with intramolecular forces. So an easy way, like you think, um, when you think internet, like the internet is how you um, interact with other people in the, all over the whole entire world. Um, but if you have intranet, I don't know if your school or your, uh, maybe your job has something called intranet, that is just within that particular school or within that particular job. Um, it's not, you can't communicate with people everywhere. So there are differences between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces. So intramolecular forces you might be familiar with. Um, ionic bonds are intramolecular forces, how the cations and anions are attracted to each other. Um, covalent bonds are also intramolecular forces. Um, they're actually the bonds between the, the sharing of the valence electrons. Um, those are the covalent bonds are actually intramolecular forces. And then lastly, it's the metallic forces. Um, it's the metal cations and the mobile an um, electrons kind of flowing between the cations, the sea of electrons. Those three are intramolecular forces. They're within a compound. Um, intermolecular forces are between a compound and another compound. So let's talk about those guys. Okay, so there are three main IMFs. Um, the first one being called hydrogen bonds. This is deceiving because hydrogen bonds are not really bonds. They're not bonds, but they're called bonds because they're very strong in comparison to the rest of them. These guys are really strong. You might, be, uh, you might have noticed them as called H bonds. Um, and what they are is, is when a hydrogen atom of, a, of one molecule is attracted to a highly electronegative atom of another molecule. Um, the highly electronegative atom I'm atoms I'm talking about are F, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. Um, these are the only ones that can be, you, that can be a hydrogen can be bonded to to make hydrogen bonding. So, for example, what I mean by that, let me grab a pen. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's take water for example. Here is what water looks like, and it's one water molecule and another water molecule. These are the covalent bonds, not the IMFs. Okay, these are the covalent bonds within the water molecule. Okay, um, and we know that oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. So uh, the electrons are going to flow a lot more around the oxygen atom than around the hydrogen atom. So this is going to be slightly negative, and we're going to denote that with a delta, with a minus charge, and these guys are going to be slightly positive. Okay? Same goes for this guy. Electron's going to flow towards the oxygen, making this slightly positive, and this slightly negative. Okay, and we know that negative charges and positive charges attract each other. So we're going to have a very strong attraction here. This is our H bond, okay? This guy is responsible for the boiling point of, high, of, of water being pretty high. It's responsible for the, you know, how things freeze and the, and the way the crystal structure is. It's responsible for a lot of things um, within water that makes water water. This hydrogen um, bond is, is pretty important and it's pretty strong. It's a very strong high attraction from one, one water molecule to another. Um, another type of IMF is dipole-dipole. This is when an uh, attraction between absolutely charged regions of a polar molecule. Now don't forget in a polar bond, we have one that's highly electronegative atom bonded to another uh, non-electronegative non atom. So not as electronegative as fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, but pretty close. So electrons here are going to flow towards the chlorine, okay? Making this positive, this negative. Same, got, same thing goes over here, making this positive and this negative. And again, we know that negative and positive attract. Very similarly to hydrogen bond, but these guys are much, different, much more different in electronegativity values than these guys. So this is not as strong. So this guy here is the dipole-dipole interaction. Okay? Um, so these guys are the strongest, and these guys are strong, but not as strong. Okay. The last one is the London dispersion. All you might have known that as van der Waals forces. Um, it's or induced dipole. That might be something that you've heard before. Induced dipole. When something's induced, we kind of force it to be a certain way. So it's be called induced dipole between two nonpolar molecules. So here's nitrogen that's nonpolar. Electrons are going to be equally shared among this nitrogen as, as they are in this nitrogen. However, we do know that electrons are constantly moving, right? They're always in motion. So some points or sometimes the electrons are going to be over here at some particular time. So we're going to just for a second, this might be slightly negative, and this might be slightly positive, which then induces this molecule to then say, oh, electron, I don't like being around other electrons, so this guy's going to flow over here, making this guy positive and this guy negative, making an attraction here. Here is the induced. We induce this one to actually change. 
So here's the induced dipole. This is very, very weak. Because electrons are constantly moving, this will break and electrons will flow back here because we know this is nonpolar. There's no reason that it's over here versus over here. This is nonpolar. Electrons are going to be equally shared. So it'll break. So it's very, very um, weak. Things that, have, um, that are nonpolar are typically gases um, because they are, they are they're not going to be, it's going to take a lot of, hardly any energy actually, to make them into gases because these electrons are, I mean, sorry, this bond is very, very weak and the attraction is very, very weak. So they're going to be all over the place. So typically gases, then liquids, and these are typically solids at room temperature uh, because of these IMFs. So um, that basically is IMFs. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had... No, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah.